Sometimes I ask myself, do you imagine for a second that I didn't follow my instincts and my thoughts about what's right and what's wrong? And I only thought about business and business. And imagine for a second I will have my restaurant at the old post office, at the new Trump Hotel. And imagine for a second that because I will be in, in, the, in the hotel of who became the president, I will have his ear. In the days after Hurricane Maria swept through Puerto Rico, leaving citizens without food, water, or electricity, Master Chef Jose Andres arrived with one mission, feeding people. His World Central Kitchen served more than two million meals in about a month. Years earlier, in 2014, Andres had announced he would open a restaurant in businessman Donald Trump's forthcoming hotel in Washington, D.C. At the time, Trump called Andres one of the very best in the field. Andres said he was proud to partner with Trump. But seven months later, Andres decided not to open the restaurant when the just declared presidential candidate Trump made disparaging comments about Mexican immigrants. The Trump organization sued Andres's restaurant group and Andres's restaurant group countersued. In my for a second, I could have this kind of the red line to the president. And in my for a second, I was able to communicate with him and and being able to tell him the problem here is bigger than maybe your team are telling you, Mr. President. Maybe of what you are realizing. And I need you just to support me to become the food czar. Mind for a second, and he will say yes. At the very least, we wouldn't be talking about hungry people in Puerto Rico. Maybe we will have other issues, but the hunger wouldn't be an issue. And you tell me, do I have proof that some people die because lack of water and hunger? Yes, I knew maybe other people had issues because water and food. I know that for a fact. Probably I will say that one dead is one dead too many because lack of food or water in America today. So sometimes I regret that saying, if I had a better communication. So on that front, I give myself not a very high note. You can see how emotional Andres is over the power to save lives through food. As he describes in his book, We Fed an Island, this was the first interview he gave the day he returned to Washington, D.C. from his first month in Puerto Rico. Can you tell us a little bit about this photo and talk about what things were like on the ground for people in rural areas? This is in, uh, in Eloisa, 30 minutes uh, west of San Juan by the water. Every time we'll go, we had, uh, we still have 10 food trucks. Those stories one day will be told amazing. Those food trucks getting everywhere where others were not getting to. And these two girls will be always there, not waiting for a plate of food, but they will never eat until the last person on the line ate. And they were there just helping with the fruit, the water. And there was me just thanking them for the amazing service they were doing. Jose Andres came to America to cook. More than 25 years later, he is celebrated as a humanitarian. 60 Minutes Anderson Cooper began his thing of saying, he's not a relief expert, and, and it's true, I'm, it's not my job, it's not what I do for a living, it's, like, not, it's, not, it. it's not my work, but uh, I don't put it on my curriculum, but I've been in many hurricanes before. I've been the in, in earthquake. earthquakes before. Yeah. If I was not in all of those situations before, maybe, I would have the, the drive to do what we did in Puerto Rico. We are able to do the most important thing, which is to gather the food community against the purpose of bringing food relief. We can say we are first food responders. My friend Jim Case gave me that term. We will become FFR. People have been asking Andres about his political aspirations. So I hear you're running for office. Yeah, right. <laughs> The senators already call me, Jose, in case you don't know, I'm running for senator myself. And you and I, we share the same views. All right. You, you should support me. I'm like, really? Can I read this quote to you? Oh, sh I would not mind running for senator of Maryland because I think we're in need of shaping Congress. I think every American should be considering running for office, especially today. I think considering to run for office is something very simple. Everybody has an opinion and everybody should be entitled to their opinion. But I think if you ask yourself, if I was running for president, if I was running for congressman or woman, for senator, what my stand will be on this and this and that issue? I think it brings a gravitas more 
when you're really thinking, if I was the president, this is what I would do. Mm -hmm. It's not use an opinion with no responsibility behind it. So I think everybody should be playing this game. Yeah, but I but you said that you were thinking about running no, for they, office. They asked me, I asked, and I said, would you ever run? I'm like, maybe, yes. Why, why I'm going to say no. Why I'm, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm only 48. I probably have other 50 years ahead of me, at least, if I get in shape, 60. <laughs> so how did a cook from Spain become a sought-after political candidate in Washington, D.C.? He came to America for the first time with the Spanish Navy. I was cooking for the Admiral when he was at home, which was a great, a great job because I had my little apartment in the south part of Spain in a little town called San Fernando. I asked the Admiral to go on a boat. He put me on a boat. He granted me that wish and was a sailing ship to train the midshipmen. And they put me as assistant of the second commander. Cooking at the ship was no easy. For me to uh, uh, help the second commander gave me more freedom, especially when we got to port that the boat was will become like an embassy. Uh, first time I came to America, Pensacola. Do you remember something that you ate in Pensacola and you just thought, how am I eating this in America? Uh, it was the first time ever I ate social crops. And for me, it was like, wow, this is very cool. Uh, were they fried? Yeah, those were fried and nice and crunchy. And that was great. Besides the white beaches of Pensacola and watching the Blue Angels, and all the celebration that was going on around. The five flag celebration was for me it was a very amazing moment. That was your first time in America. Pensacola. First time in America, in America Pensacola. Yeah. Okay. But you came back to America and to Washington, D.C. to start this restaurant yeah. 25 years ago. Yeah. Why Washington, D.C.? I was looking in where to belong. I went to Chicago. I remember talking to Richard Melman, the great Richard Melman, who told me, whatever you do next, throw your anchor over the ship and stay there no matter what. That was one of the best advice anybody has given me. Through food, Jose brought his idyllic childhood in Spain to America. Every family in Spain cook at home 33 years ago. The middle class was up and coming. People would go every day to the market and people would cook every day. And restaurants or something like look like restaurants, I can tell you no, no nice looking restaurants <laughs> like this, was more a diner in a gas station. But that to me looked like the restaurant. That was for the special occasions. He becoming 15, living home, and going to work restaurants when I was 16. This is the first time I began eating in the kitchen. <laughs> the place that we were serving to the people in the dining room. The town I grew up uh, was 2,000 people, 45 minutes away from Barcelona. Whatever was the catch of the day in the port that day is what they would bring. And again, uh, you will only buy what you were going to cook. Andres was approached to open a Spanish restaurant at a time when Spanish cuisine was not well known in America. Andres is now credited with bringing small plates tapas eating to the United States. Haleo, now 25 years old, was in a then transitioning area of Washington, D.C. that is currently one of the most desirable locations in the city. They told me, we're opening this Spanish restaurant. We're looking for a chef, drug dealers across the street. Nobody at night, nobody walking, nobody driving. Like, really? A Spanish restaurant here? Great. And they had the vision of Spanish cooking. And restaurants like this can have such a bigger impact in a, a, in a city, in a neighborhood. Uh, can help define the DNA of the city. A restaurant like this can become a pumping heart. Right in this chair, right in this bar, is where Patrick Monaghan said the first Sunday we were open. And he began telling me, Jose, if you love America, America will love you back. Maybe he's the guy I got so involved in politics. A restaurant like this, a lot of things can happen. It's an amazing adventure of the living history of, of our city, even if you don't realize. It's a microcosmos of who we are. That's why I love to go into restaurants and sometimes sit at the bar and just look around. Because it's just every second is a movie in the making. Yeah, I mean, I always say that I don't open business. I tell the stories. I wish that I didn't have so many stories to tell. <laughs> You're exhausted. Because uh, life would be easier just doing the Spanish cooking, probably. But my life wouldn't be as rich.